Welcome back to the Portal Report Head Coach Series. I'm your host, George Michalowski, with the Portal Report. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, head coach of the Eastern Michigan men's basketball program, Stan Heath. Coach, welcome on. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, I want to get right into it and, and talk about the portal and your guys. But but first off, you know, how has everything gone this summer? Uh, you know, are your guys on campus practicing? How's everybody looking? You know, give us an update on the program right now. Well, this is the, you know, the start of my second year. I got the job last year in April. And so this was really kind of the first full summer where we had, you know, a whole team. And um, we had, um, you know, some returning guys from last year. But then we have several guys that transferred in. Uh, out of the portal uh, and and so you know just to have everybody um, for the summer months whether it was you know June July a little bit of August uh, building chemistry working hard getting to know each other um, I've really been impressed with this group uh, they they like each other they work extremely hard they take things serious and they pick things up very quickly so um, you know we're, we're forming a, a really nice foundation uh, to, to have a very successful season Stan, you've been in the college game for a while now, obviously, with, uh, you know, your stops at Kent State, Arkansas, South Florida, and, and now your alma mater, Eastern Michigan. So, um, you know, you've seen changes in college hoops when it comes to the style of play, the styles of recruiting, and, and everything. But, you know, over the past years, of, as you've gotten back into the college game, how, you know, how big of a change has the transfer portal's emergence been for you to adjust to? Well, fortunately for me, um, you know, this has been probably the best thing to help get a program back and, 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 and back quickly, uh, simply because, you know, you have the ability to um, have a guy eligible right away. Um, and that's been, like, God sent for us, um, simply because, you know, Eastern Michigan, I went to school here, and um, so this is, you know, a special place for me. But one of the things that was always attractive um, at Eastern Michigan were kids that, especially like from the Detroit area or Flint area, some of the hotbeds of a basketball player, um, they would go somewhere else, leave, and, and maybe things didn't quite work out. They liked to come back. So uh, I've reaped some nice rewards because of that, especially this season, by, you know, landing several really talented players um, that were, you know, at different colleges, different universities that have decided to come back. So the portal's been good, really good. And you know, I kind of looked at it when I first got the job back. I spent the last four years with Orlando Magic and Coach G League team. It's basically like it's free agency. You know, like every year, um, you know, you need to have the awareness that, you know, somebody might leave, somebody might come available, and position yourself so you can, you know, build your roster each and every year. So, you know, I think sometimes, you know, you, you, know, you can look at it like, well, I don't like it, it's, it's this, but at the end of the day, it's, the rule is the rule, and, and you have to embrace it, and you have to work through it because – if you don't, the game's going to pass you by. That's right. And, and one of the players, one of those very talented guys that, that came home was perhaps the most well-known name in the transfer portal this offseason. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Absolutely. Uh, Imani Bates, you know, he's right from down the street, a uh, former five-star prospect. Take me through the moment when the pen hit the paper and he was officially an eagle. How, how did that feel for you guys as a staff? Well, you know, I, I just got to know. I watched Monty last year when he was playing, you know, in AU circuit and things like that. And then uh, I really didn't, you know, never talked to him, didn't recruit him, didn't do anything. But his dad was obviously the AU coach um, for Bates Fundamental. So we had conversations about actually some of the other players on his team. And actually one of them was on the team, Orlando Lovejoy. But, um, you know, this year when, when things uh, weren't going well for him at Memphis, um, his dad and I connected and talked about different things. And, you know, once he got into the portal, um, you know, it was my first chance to kind of, you know, when he got back home, it was my first chance to meet him. And I've been just so impressed with him as a person. Like, I, I know he's an amazing player. He's super talented. And um, he can do so many things on the court at six foot nine. And, you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm not even teaching. He's just got gifted. But I've just been amazed that, you know, he's been coachable. Um, he gets along extremely well with his teammates. Uh, he wants to be great. Not good. He wants to be special. And so I've been amazed at that. I've been amazed with him. You know, just wanting to, to be a sponge and, and grow in other areas of the game, whether it's defensively or, um, you know, just learning different things on the court. So it's been, you know, sometimes just the stars just line up and you catch a break. And I'm very thankful. I know our community in Eastern Michigan are very grateful that, you know, he chose to come back home and, and do something that, that's hard to do. You know, it's not easy for 
a, a player of his magnitude, a number one player in the country, to say, hey, I want to go to Eastern Michigan and not one of the, you know, the Power Five schools, and uh, and play in an area that I'm comfortable with. So, you know, he did that because he felt that's what's best for him and his growth, his development for what he wants to do in his future. And you know, he listened. He didn't listen to the naysayers or all the different people who had their own opinions. He went with his heart and with his head, and and I give him a lot of credit for that. Hundred percent. And and we, we want to wish you know everyone. Uh, you know, is hopefully rooting for the kid after, uh, you know, a tough year at Memphis and just being under that much spotlight at a young age is, is yeah, yeah. pretty crazy. So, um, you know, Imani, a big pickup. Another one that you guys brought in, uh, Legend Gator from Providence. You know, probably the yeah. coolest the coolest name out of any of the transfers <laughs> <laughs> this year. Yeah. Um, but what... you know, and, and just to, just to kind of, I'm going to touch on Legend a second, but I, I, I like what you brought up about Imani, the fact that, you know, I think a lot of people forget he actually reclassified. This is supposed to be his freshman year right. in college and as a true freshman. So um, he is a young player. But to get the legend Jeter, um, you know, kind of that area, he's kind of this guy, and, and he's from River Rouge High School, a Detroit kid as well, too, that transferred from Providence. He's kind of this guy that it's hard to kind of put um, a, a, a box on him and say this is his game. Like, he's... He's actually kind of the college version of a Draymond Green because he's an undersized center, but he can handle the ball, he can pass the ball, he's super strong, he's got a wide body, uh, he's very crafty, a very high IQ as well too. So it's going to give us a little different dimension uh, as a center, a guy who can facilitate offense uh, as well as switch defensively onto different players on the floor and have an I- IQ at that position where you know he makes the game easy for other players. Like He's not one of those guys where you run a bunch of th- things for him he actually just things happen for him because he knows how to play. So uh, I really like what I see out of Legend. He's worked hard to get himself in better shape, to get healthy. He was he wasn't healthy last year, so they redshirted him. So he actually has four years. But um, again, kind of one of those glue pieces that makes your team better because you know he's he's good at facilitating and making the game easier for his teammates. Another guy you guys brought in, you know, kind of kind of to wrap things up here. Another guy is is Tyson Acuff, you know, who I saw. Yeah play last year a bit for Duquesne out here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but, you know, he's another Michigan native that you guys are bringing home. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a common theme, and uh, he's another one of those guys that's from the area. So what is Tyson yeah. going to provide for you guys this season that you're excited for? To me, Tyson's one of those throwback guards. Like, he's old school. Um, he knows how to play. He's, he's a big guard. He's 6'4", and he can, he's a point guard for He's probably the truest point guard we have on our team in terms of running a team communicating. He's been a very, very good three-point shooter. He did that last year at Duquesne. Um, I've got to give uh, Duquesne a lot of credit because, um, I don't know if you guys know this or people know this, but uh, my assistant, uh, the assistant coach at Eastern Michigan when I played was Keith Danbrot, the head coach at Duquesne, who actually told me about you know Tyson might be uh, leaving the, the, the team. And two of the coaches on the staff are Charles and Carlos Thomas, who are probably the upper echelon elite players that ever played at Eastern Michigan and played in the NBA as well, too. So uh, a lot of things were working in our favor, and we're so glad to have him because really what Tyson does, it gives us the opportunity to move a guy like Noah Faircon on and off the ball where he can just be this lethal scorer, which he is, and uh, not be, you know, have to have the full uh, job of being the point guard. So um, I think that backcourt combination with Tyson now and Noah together is going to be as good as any combination you can find. And yeah, the Monty Page to that equation on the perimeter. And, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable going up against anybody in the country with those three guys. 100%, as you should be, Coach. And uh, we'll have our eyes on Eastern Michigan hoops all year. And uh, you guys should too out there, whoever's listening to this interview. And, um, Coach, I want to thank you again uh, for joining the show. Really appreciate that. Um, and, uh, you know, good luck this season. Best of luck with everything Eastern Michigan hoops. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on your show.